Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like to get some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. First up, I'm making a turkey pot pie. I had a leftover turkey breast tenderloin from a couple nights ago and I wanted to use it up so I decided to do a pot pie. Now I have a completely from scratch pot pie recipe. It is delicious, so good. I'll have that linked in the description box below. But if you're wanting something quick and easy for a weeknight meal, this is a really good recipe to use. Now I found this years and years ago. I can't even remember the name of the blog. I think it's called like Working Woman's pot pie or something to that effect. I'll try my best to find the original recipe and link it in the description box below. But if I can't find it, I'll type it out and um, of course source where I got it from. All right, let me show you how to make this. It's so easy. I've got the oven preheating to 350 degrees. In this bowl, I'm going to combine everything for the filling. First, I'm going to add a can of cream of chicken soup. Now, a lot of recipes that I see for pot pies call for one can. This particular recipe calls for two, so that's what I'm going to use. You can use one if you'd prefer. I'm adding about a half a can of milk, and then you can use whatever seasonings you like. This recipe calls for seasoned salt and pepper, so I'm going to add that and stir that until it's combined. I have this can of diced potatoes. I'm going to drain it really well and add it to my filling. I like potatoes in my pot pie. If you don't, you can of course omit them. You can use a, a fresh russet potato, peel it, dice it if you'd like. I just like using the canned, it's just quicker and easier. And then I like to add frozen peas and carrots. Use whatever vegetables you and your family like. And then this particular recipe calls for shredded cheddar cheese, so I'm going to add some of that. And here's the leftover turkey tenderloin from the other night. I'm going to cut it into bite-sized pieces and add that to the filling and stir it until it's combined really well. Today I'm cooking this in a nine inch cake pan. You can also use a cast iron skillet or a deep dish pie dish if you have one. I'm using these refrigerated pie crusts. You just set them out to get to room temperature for about 15 minutes. I'm going to unroll it, place it into the bottom of my cake pan. Then I'm going to add the filling. I've spread the filling out with a spoon and then I'm going to cover it with my second pie crust and then you just want to go around the sides and seal the pie crust together. Don't worry about being perfect on this. It doesn't really have to be perfect. It will be yummy either way. In this small bowl, I have an egg that I've added about a tablespoon of water to. I'm going to beat that really well and then brush that onto my pie crust. Then I'm going to cut some slits in the top crust with a knife. Normally I would put this onto a cookie sheet and put it into the oven just in case it bakes over a little bit. I forgot to do it this night, but I would highly suggest you do that. This is going to go into the preheated oven. I baked mine for about 45 to 50 minutes. Check it halfway through though, and if your crust is getting a little extra brown on the outside, you can cover that with some foil. You just wanna cook this until your crust is golden brown. Here's the finished pie out of the oven. I would suggest you letting this sit for about 15 minutes before cutting into it. And then here's my finished plate. I didn't serve anything with this this night, no salad or anything. We weren't super hungry, but this is really filling and comforting as is. And you've got your protein, your vegetables, and your carb in it. So it's really a complete meal. You can serve, like I said, though, a salad or another vegetable alongside of it if you would like. I recommend you all give this a try. It's a really quick and easy uh, weeknight meal. And like I said, it's very, very comforting and filling. For dinner this night, I made teriyaki chicken skewers. This is another super quick and easy weeknight meal that is yummy. I shared how I made this in a previous video. It was a collab with Fallon over at Moss Family TV. I'll have that video linked in my description box below. So if you'd like to see how I made this, check that out. And this was dinner this night.
For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for coleslaw tostadas. These were delicious. This was actually sent to me by one of you sweet subscribers. Her name is Taylor. And in a previous What's for Dinner video, I had mentioned, I think it was What's for Dinner, maybe grocery haul. Either way, I'd asked if you have any recipes that you'd like to share with me to, you know, email them to me. And she sent this over. I had tacos on the menu plan already. And I basically had almost everything that I needed to make it. So I decided to make these instead. And I'm so glad I did these were yummy now i have to be honest with you i was a little skeptical about the coleslaw with the tostada especially i i don't know if you all have noticed this before on my channel but i'm a little weird about certain foods mixing i don't like my foods touching you can always tell my plate from my husband's plates <laughs> when i show them because my food like never touches um so i can be a little bit weird about that i was hesitant but if you're like me, don't be. Make these. These are so, so good. It, there was something about the coleslaw, the creaminess, mixing with the taco meat. It, it was just delicious. So you've got to give this a try. Here is what I did to make these. Taylor, thank you so much for sending me this recipe. We will definitely be making these again. I'm going to start out by making the coleslaw. I let it sit for a couple hours in the fridge before dinner. You don't have to do that, but I just like to make coleslaw a little bit in advance whenever I make it. I just like the texture better that way. You can, of course, use red and green cabbage and shred it up yourself. I took the easy route out, though, this night and just used a bag of coleslaw mix from the grocery store. Taylor's recipe called for this Hidden Valley Ranch coleslaw dressing, which I'd never tried before, but it was good. I would buy this again. I'm adding some of that dressing, and then her recipe didn't call for this, but I added just a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I'm going to stir that until it's well combined, cover it with the lid, and like I said, just place this into the refrigerator until we're ready for it for dinner. Next, I'm going to make the taco meat. Now, quick note here, there are a couple different steps to this recipe of things that you make so that you can assemble the tostadas, but they're all very quick, very easy. So in this skillet here, I have some ground beef that I cooked until it was brown and then I've drained it. Then I'm going to add a little water some taco seasoning, and Taylor suggested adding some salsa and diced onion. She said you don't have to do this, but it just gives it some extra flavor. I didn't feel like chopping up an onion today, but there's onion in the salsa, so I added a little bit of salsa and then some salt and pepper. I'm going to stir that until it is mixed pretty well and then just allow that to simmer for maybe five to seven minutes. While that's simmering, I'm going to get started on my refried beans. I'm adding a can of refried beans to a bowl. I like to add in a couple tablespoons of water and some salt and pepper. Sometimes I add a little taco seasoning, and I believe Taylor said she adds some sometimes as well. You can also add hot sauce to this or salsa, and then you're just going to stir this up. I like to add, like I said, the couple tablespoons of water just so it loosens up a little bit, and then I'm going to pop this into the microwave for about a minute and a half or two minutes to warm them up. Now it's time to assemble these tostadas. I'm using boxed old El Paso tostada shells. Taylor suggested using flour tortillas and cooking them in some oil over the stove so that they're nice and crispy. But like I said, I was going for quick and easy this night. So I'm just using the tostada shells. And then I'm going to layer everything. So I'm adding a layer of beans, then the taco meat, the shredded cheddar cheese, the coleslaw that we made earlier, and that's it. I know I've said this before, but remember, you're in your kitchen. If there's something on this that you want to change out, totally do it. You could use black beans. You could make refried black beans. That would be yummy. You could use ground turkey, ground chicken. You could even do like carnitas or steak. That would be delicious. You could add guacamole, avocado, whatever you like. Here are what the plates look like. After I took this picture, I decided to add some diced tomatoes to ours and then a little of the Taco Bell mild uh, taco sauce. I added that over that and like I said, this was delicious. And again, there was just something about the creaminess of the coleslaw that kind of mixed with the taco seasoning. They were just yummy. So I recommend you all give this a try. And once again, Taylor, thank you for sending this. This is definitely something that we will be making again. For dinner this night, we just had some of the leftover turkey pot pie and that was our dinner.
For dinner this night, I tried another new recipe for a hoisin salmon. I'll, of course, have this linked in the description box below. I'm going to start out by making the sauce that we're going to pour over the salmon. In this bowl, I'm going to add in my hoisin sauce, my soy sauce, sesame oil, and whisk that until it's well combined, and then I'm going to set that to the side. I've got my oven preheating to 400 degrees. On this cookie sheet, I have a piece of aluminum foil. I'm going to add my vegetables. You can really use whatever vegetables you like. I'm using this stir fry mix. It had broccoli, carrots, some cabbage, and snow peas in it. I'm drizzling the vegetables with a little olive oil and then seasoning with some salt and pepper. I'm going to give it a toss. Next, I'm going to lay my salmon filet on top and this I just got at Walmart. I'm going to drizzle that hoisin sauce that we made over this salmon and then that'll be it. I'm just going to crumple up the aluminum foil around the salmon and then this will be ready to go into the oven. My two youngest siblings were with us this weekend, and in case you're new to my channel, I have three siblings. I have a 13-year-old little brother, a 15-year-old sister, and then a sister who is about two years younger than I am. And because we're so close in age, I won't disclose her age. <laughs> I'll just say she's a little bit older than the 15 year old and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> but anyway, because they were over, um, my little brother, he loves salmon, loves it. But I wasn't sure if he would like the hoisin sauce. So instead, I just seasoned his with a little bit of lemon pepper and some freshly squeezed lemon juice and wrapped that up in the um, aluminum foil. And with him, he does like broccoli, but he does not like it cooked. He likes his raw. So I didn't add any vegetables to his pouch. I just served it on the side. So the fish is going to go into the oven and I baked it for about 12 minutes. We don't like our salmon well done. So how long you cook your salmon really depends on how thick your salmon fillets are and whether you like them well done or a little more on the rare side. And here's the hoisin salmon pouch once I pull it out of the oven. And when you take these out of the oven, you do want to be careful when you open them. There's quite a bit of steam in that. So here's my brother's plate. Here's his lemon pepper salmon and his raw broccoli. He dipped his broccoli in some ranch. And then here was the hoisin salmon that the rest of us had and the vegetables. This was yummy and such an easy dinner. Next up, I made a Greek chicken sheet pan dinner. This was another really quick and easy dinner to put together and it's minimal cleanup. You've just got one pan, maybe a knife and a cutting board. I have my oven preheated to 425 degrees. Now, I didn't follow a specific recipe for this, but I'll try to find a recipe similar to what I did and I'll link it in the description box below for you. My oven is preheating to 425 degrees. I've sprayed my cookie sheet with a little bit of cooking spray. That's probably not necessary, but I just wanted to be sure that nothing stuck. I have some chicken breasts that I got on Markdown. I'm going to add my chicken to my cookie sheet. And then I decided to season my chicken with some Cavenders and oregano and a little extra salt and pepper. If you use this Cavenders, I believe the first ingredient is salt. So just be mindful of that. You may want to watch your salt. And I've seasoned both sides of my chicken. And now for the vegetables, use whatever you've got on hand or whatever your family likes. I have about three quarters of this red onion left over that I need to use up, so I'm going to use that. Some Kalamata olives, some baby red potatoes, and then as you can see, I have just a couple pieces of a green bell pepper. I wanna use this up, and then I'm using a zucchini. And here's my sheet pan ready to go into the oven. It doesn't really matter what order you add the vegetables in or where you add them. As you can see over here to the left, I have, or the side closest to you rather, my left, I have the chopped up onions, bell pepper, and zucchini. I did cut the zucchini a little on the thicker side. And then for the potatoes, I would recommend cutting them into quarters or even eighths if you want everything to kind of cook at the same time. If you want to leave your potatoes whole, you of course can. I would just suggest putting them on the cookie sheet first by themselves and giving them a little bit of a head start. 
I've drizzled some olive oil over my vegetables, potatoes, and the chicken. And then for seasonings, use whatever seasonings you like. I'm using the Cavenders again, some salt, pepper, and oregano. I'm also going to add some freshly squeezed lemon juice. And then I will toss the vegetables and the potatoes just a little with some tongs. And this will be ready to go into the oven. I know I've mentioned this several times, but I am not a fan of olives, but my husband and my sister love them. So I have this little snack pack of Kalamata olives that I got from Walmart. I'm going to add the olives just to part of the vegetables because like I said, I don't like it and I know my brother doesn't like them either. So this went into the oven. I bake this for about 30 minutes. You want to cook it until the chicken is at least 165 degrees internal temperature and your potatoes are tender. And I apologize, I forgot to get a picture when this came out of the oven, but all I did was serve this up and then I sprinkled some feta cheese over the vegetables and the potatoes and that was dinner this night. This was yummy. My husband and my sister loved this and it was good and like I said, so easy and quick to put together, perfect for a weeknight meal. For the last meal in this week's video, we did buffalo wild wings. So we've started rotating when my siblings come over, who gets to pick what um, when we go out to eat or order food in. And it was my brother's pick. He picked buffalo wild wings, which I know we just went there like a week or two ago, just my husband and I, but that's what he wanted. So that's where we went. I forgot to get a picture of the appetizers, but he, my, he, my brother, wanted mozzarella sticks. This boy can eat his weight in mozzarella sticks. So we got an order of those that we split. And then here's a picture of my plate. I got there, I think it's called their sub southern chicken sandwich it has a holla bun and then it's got like a bacon aioli it has a coleslaw and pickles but I got the coleslaw and pickles on the side my sister ended up taking my pickles my husband took my coleslaw um but this sandwich is delicious that bacon aioli yum so good and then I got their potato wedges with some cheese Here's what my husband got. He got a 20-piece order of wings, but he didn't even eat half of them. We had leftovers the next day for lunch with the other half. We got the buffalo medium for him, and then he got the honey barbecue, and then my sister and I wanted to try the teriyaki. The teriyaki wasn't so great. It was a complete salt bomb, which I know teriyaki sauce is a little bit salty, but this was like straight up salt. So we didn't prefer that, but all the other wings were delicious. My sister also got the southern chicken burger, so I didn't get a picture of her plate and then my brother got the honey barbecue wings as well. So that was what we had this night. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope that you have a great rest of the day. And if you celebrate Christmas, I hope that you have a very, very Merry Christmas. Thanks so much again. Bye-bye.